three hour live. Okay. Oh, that's awfully bright. There. Move that. Oh, hello. This is the shop. Well, my bench. Welcome to the shop. I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn this guy, this masonry nail, into a stamp that I'm going to use to texture some metal. I've already made a stamp out of, you know, out of uh, hex punches and stuff. I made one of a masonry nail. So, let's see. There's, you don't have to use masonry nails. You can use hex keys too. Like, that's what I've used a lot of them. Turn the slide back on. Maybe I can leave it over here. Ooh, it's bright. Um, let's see if you can, if it'll, the autofocus will be good to me. Nope. Well, there's a stamp. It's a triangle with three divots in it. And this stamp is based on some Viking examples. Same with this guy. There you go. I'm sure if you go on Pinterest and look for Viking artifacts or Viking ancient, well, don't look for Viking jewelry because you can get a bunch of modern stuff, but yeah. If you look for Viking artifacts or Viking museum jewelry, you're going to see a bunch of things with little, it kind of looks like the Triforce, but there's little tiny divots if you can see. Maybe. Yeah, you can kind of see little divots in there. They, they like to put little dots inside triangles. There's a lot of that in the jewelry. Anyway, these I made out of old hex keys. I mean, there's the, there's the end. I cut off one of these things. So I have all my old hex keys. I'm going to turn that off now. You can fu and I know a lot of us have some of these probably, you know, knocking around the bottom of the toolbox that we acquire somehow. Ikea ones don't work for this. Sorry. I know. I know. I have, I have a million, you probably have a million. They're really easy to find, but the metal is not good enough for what we're going to do because you want nice tool steel to do this. Oh, quick disclaimer. There's fire and there are power tools here. So be careful. Wear eye protection. Put your hair back. You know, hair is back. I'm not wearing any jewelry aside from my wedding ring. And frankly, this thing's titanium and can't come off right now. So this is at my own risk. So yeah, don't. And this is a Fitbit. It's not like it'll get caught. It'll rip off for the ends. So yes, be smart. Safety first. Wear your eye protection. You can ask my daughter. I do not let her in here without eye protection. I get I get really annoyed when she walks in here, even if she's sitting at the other end of the room when she doesn't like stop to put on the safety glasses that she has. Because yes, I keep a stack of safety glasses if anyone walks. If I'm here doing stuff and people walk in, it's like, safety glasses, please. Please, unless I can trust and be smart and like sit way over there and not come over like, what you doing? When there's fire. So, unlike a kid. Like, she understands, but still, she's like, ooh, what's that? Like, meh. <laughs> to prevent at least some accidents, always wear your safety glasses. I know, I know, they're not the most fashionable thing on the planet, but always wear them. Oh, and there's fire, and there's power tools, and all that. So be smart, and be careful if you decide to try this. I do not want to get angry emails saying, so-and-so lost an eye, or caught themselves on fire, or burned their hands. Be safe okay yeah i've it's, it's kind of like mom saying be careful when the kids climb up the tree even though i don't care if she climbed up the, you know, it's like you know fine you know go climb a tree awesome you're climbing a tree sweet but i have to say be careful it's kind of like the mom i don't know maybe that's a mom thing in general or parent thing in general but be careful don't want angry stuff so here we got here's what we're using masonry nails uh Brian picked these up for me at Home Depot. I don't know how much they cost, but I know they weren't like stupid expensive. And again, nice tempered hardened steel there. You want good tool steel. You can use uh, masonry nails, old hex keys. Uh, I heard someone say you could use like old screwdriver. If you have like a nice quality screwdriver. Although I don't think they make them up. Given, given how easily... Some of the screwdrivers tend to, like, warp. I don't know if the tool steel and, like, if you have an old screwdriver that's kind of bent and you're like, mm. But, you know, maybe it would work. 
give it a shot. You can give it a shot. I mean, I tried the Ikea ones, and those were crap. Those didn't work at all, so give it a shot. I mean, if it looks like it might be a decent piece of steel, uh, I've heard a good test, and I've noticed this too, actually, is if you take a piece of steel and you run a, you try and, you tr really try and, like, cut it with a saw or cut it with a file real good, if it just goes like, nope, then you're probably okay. Um, some might, some it might, might bite into some, but this is enough for these purposes. Because these stamps are not meant for, like, they're, they're not meant for, like, marking steel or anything. This is, this is for jewelry making. This is for copper, silver, you know, soft metals, or leather. Uh, actually, here's a little piece I did earlier, a little, little piece. I made one earlier. You see that? Little Viking. Little Viking-esque. Little Viking style stamp. They like their triangles and they like their little dots in their triangles. I like that a lot. So it works. They work on leather. So if you want to uh, mark leather, you can do that. They would probably work great on clay too. Oh, okay. Make sure that doesn't fall. So yeah, got a bunch of masonry nails. First though, step one, let's get your masonry nail out. You get your nail. There's the nail. There's the point. They're fluted, so they've got these ridges. If you're going to want to anneal it, we have to soften this so we can cut it, and then we can shape it. No matter what you're making. I'm making it a texture bunch. So I'm going to put this on to my surface. Here's where the fire comes in. Move my phone to a safe distance. Hopefully you can see what's going to happen pretty well. I'm going to try to put that here so you can see the red and tilt it a little. Oh, and uh, my light is above this. It moves. Out of the way it goes. You don't want anything above here that can catch fire. Nothing flammable here. Because we're going to be using fire. Now, I have a Smith little torch. It's a propane oxygen torch. This is what I normally use for my silversmithing. I can use that for this. It takes a long time, because it, it takes, I mean, this is the biggest tip I've got. And the flame, while it's really nice, it's not very hot. It's not, it does get hot enough to do this, because I, I did my earlier ones with this thing. But it, like, it took a while. So I recommend, and I use this for enameling, it burns much hotter. This is map gas. Now be careful because this is really hot and you can't see the flame. Now, it's not on right now. It's really hard to see the flame beyond here. Um, I've had friends do, a lot of people use this for glass work because it gets hot enough for glass work. I have a lot of uh, friends and people I've met who've done glass work and um, while they're doing the, they usually have this mounted on their bench and while they're got their, they're doing their, you know, like they're making beads, you know, where you like you melt rods of glass onto them metal rod and you twist it and they're making their cool beads um sometimes they've accidentally like reached beyond this they've, they've done this and they burn themselves because they can't see the flame beyond this but the heat goes here uh i'm not gonna demo oh, that's plastic move you yeah you know flame will go that way so yeah be very careful with map gas because this, you can't see a lot of the, it gets like stupid infernal hot, like inferno-ness out here beyond where you can see the flame. So don't do anything past it. Make sure you have clear, even though with this, again, even with this, this is the, even though this is really hot, I just need to capture the heat. So I have two little charcoal blocks. I've got my nice heat resistant surface here and it's elevated on metal. I've got another soldering block. I've made like a little mini oven, like a little mini kiln, and I'm going to heat this bad boy up. And it's going to be glowing red hot, and this is how we're going to kneel, and there's, here's the fire, here's the noise. Now I can lock this, I can see the heat, I see the heat wave beyond it, but see how hard that is to see? It's super hot, like a foot beyond this. Be 
want it to glow a nice dull red. And just heat the tip. There, that's a nice red. Can you see it? This is very hot. Can you hear it? Can you hear the crackling noise? There's a crackling noise. Crackle, crackle. That's an interesting sound. So now you heat just the tip. Just like the first, you know, try to get like the first third, first quarter. Because that this part, you're going to hit with a hammer. So yeah, you don't want to make this part uh, soft. This is very hot. I'm going to lock my torch now. I like this because it has a little lock on it, so you can't. Uh, you can't do the button. Making sure everything is completely off. Always make sure everything is completely off and locked down. And I'm setting this on the floor. Normally it lives in a different place right after I use it, but making a video, so it's going there, but I'm making sure the nozzle is pointed away where even if someone will run in here, they're, they won't run into it and hurt themselves. So, hot very hot but yet we do we don't touch it what I like to do because that's to cool slowly as I pick it up I got these nice copper tongs I pick it up and I'm gonna let it cool over here on another soldering board with a bunch of other nails I did earlier and now this is where I do my Julia Child-esque thing because it can take a long time for those things to heal Heal. Oh, blah. It's annealed to cool. Have I been saying that this whole time? Oh well. Anyway, you guys see some workbench. Let's get some good workbench action. I move my arm. There. There we go. Light. We need the light. Light's important to work. Maybe I can move this down so it's not as bad. There we go. I'll do that. There we go. Now you're not being blinded by this big bar of light up here. This is one I prepared earlier. See? What you do once it's cool is you take your saw or if you have like a Dremel with a good cutoff wheel, whatever you can, just cut the tip off. Because it'll be nice and soft. You cut your tip off and use your files to make sure it's nice and uh, straight and flat on top. Because you don't want it to be like that. Because otherwise, when you punch, one side will be deeper than the other and it'll look bad. So, there we go. I made it nice and flat. And you're going to be like, now what? Well, I want this to be uh, what's usually referred to as a texture stamp or a texture punch. So it's not going to have a specific design like the other ones I've had. It's just going to have a nice texture that I can use to easy texture the background of pieces of my jewelry work. Texture background, texture different elements, you know. I want a nice little one because texturing hammers, I've seen them, they're really cool. But they're really huge and they can't really get into some of the tight spots like when I'm doing filigree or something if I want to texture around the filigree. This is a little big for that. Well, hammer's a little big for that. This is probably just exactly what I'm looking for. Hmm, this is really annoying. It is annoying, I'll turn that off. Hopefully this can help. So you've got this guy, and he's all ready to go. Erg. And I just want like a sort of matted, matte texture, like almost like a staticky looking thing is what I'm looking for. And if if this were, because this is small and round, it's a nice shape, but I want to be able to get in corners. And this would be useful to you, no matter what you want yours to be. This is the part where you can just do whatever. If you have the tools to get into little tight corners, like I have an engraver, you know, I have I have a graver mock with gravers I do engraving. Oh yeah, totally. I can get right in there 
and use the gravers to dig out little corners. They have you can use hand gravers. Anything that will cut this metal, use it. But one of my tips for when you're designing, because that's that's a tiny little area to try and put a design on. That's teeny tiny. Ow. Time to cut these. They're getting long. I have found rather than drawing a line and trying like outlining your design, trying to follow it, because then you're essentially you've essentially got a line that's like I'll do a quick say you're doing a triangle you're making a Viking stamp you're starting with your triangle you're trying to file to the, up to the outside of that line or on in the middle of that line that's gonna be a pain in the butt so and you'll probably screw up it will be true so what I like to do is start at the middle and Instead of winging this thing, because it's a texture stamp, now I need light. Now I need some light. Get over here. Light. What I like to do is kind of start in the middle and sort of fill out. And I go right to the edge of where I want my design to be. And that way when I'm filing, as soon as I hit color, I use red. Don't use black because you will have shadows and it will disappear. It'll be very hard to distinguish. Use red or green. Use some sort of color to do this. I'm going to do like a little fan ship. I'm going to keep that scalloped edge because that'll make for some interesting uh, like upsets. So I'm kind of coloring in where I want it to be and I'm just working my way to the edge. There. So I don't know if you can see if you can see the red there's those two lights on the other either side of the red that's the part that I'm going to file away. Let me get my files out. I like to keep my bench clear of tools I am not using. That is just me, a me quirk. Some people like to lay out everything they're going to use. I like to put them away as I go. So, get a file. <coughs> Nail again. Yeah, these these gotta go. Ugh. I know I'm doing that for the video. Oh yeah, bench pins are cool because you can just like put them in there. Like... But I kind of want it to. I want this point to be kind of tapered down in there because I have some stamps that I really love that are I bought commercially. I bought them uh, online or in a shop. Well, the stamp itself is the design is really pretty. It's like this far in from the edge of the stamp, so I can't go like right up next to anything. There's this big wide gap, or I have to stamp it before I do anything else to it. And uh, so yeah, I recommend when you're doing a stamp, make sure you taper it at least a little bit to the top. I might pull out one of those annoying stamps. Like, they're pretty, but one of the ways I want to use them, I kind of can't. And so one of these days, I'm going to sit down and just grind them. So I can use them how I like. There we go. Now, I went a little weird on one side here, but I don't really care since it's like a texture stamp. So I, it's not so much the, the shape of the stamp. I just want the texture. But I do want this little corner, this little point here so I can really get into spaces. And I might make another one later that has a roughly identical pattern and that way I can do, do a larger area faster. So these masonry nails are nice because they're little they can kind of fit into tight spots. Oh yeah, that looks pointy. Get the tip done. Get the tip there. And yeah, there we go. Really quick. For a real quick design. That looks good. So as you can see, I've taken away everything but the red. Now, I want to get rid of the red. It's a Sharpie. 
take a dry erase marker. This works on a lot of on plastic, on like pretty much any non-porous surface this works on. And just hit that, and there you go. Hit up the dry erase, wipe off the dry erase. Usually whatever permanent marker you've gotten in there will come straight off. I love it, I love it. Check my phone. Ooh, it's getting a little warm. If it cuts off, my phone overheated. It does that if it films for a while. Anyway, so here we are. You've got a little shape done. I'm leaving the scallops on the back. I mean, if you wanted to make like a nice little fan shape, you could just take your file. After you make your V, you can take your file and round off the fluting on the edge. Or, I mean, honestly, with a few deft hits of the file and maybe a bit of uh, taking like a round burr and sinking a few little dots in there, you could probably turn one of these into a flower fairly, fairly easily. Or like maybe even a snowflake, because it's got uh, it's got that nice fluting on the edge. Anyway, I put that there. Now to texture it. Since I want a sort of matte texture, let me get... Where did I put it? There it is. Ah, over here for use. This is a piece of uh, clay. I'm going to turn this off now. Ah, piece of clay. What you can do to uh, test your stamp, if it's not too fiddly, is you can just press it in the clay. You can look at it. Now, I might leave some residue on this thing, so be careful. You can use Play-Doh, too. Um, Play-Doh, you use a piece of copper, and you can test it, which is copper and a hammer. Go pang and look at it. Go, all right, nice. Good. Clay, copper, anything soft to press it into, you can use it to test. So, I'm going to put this up here a little bit and go... There. I'm going to texture this with a... Uh, I'm going to use my... Flex shaft, I think. Although I did hear someone say you can get a really nice matte texture by taking a coarse file and like tapping. And I've heard this done from a brass. I want to see if it works really well for this guy. So here's a this is like a lawnmower file. I got this one. I need to like chew metal. Let's see if this works. That's works really well, actually. It's really cool. Looks very textury. Hmm. I get, I get a slightly more heavy duty file. I'll set that there too. It's very textured. That's very matte looking. Mm. Yeah. Out of curiosity. That's still a little warm. This is a piece of copper. It has been annealed, which is when you soften it by heating it. This has been annealed so that it shouldn't hurt the punch because the punch hasn't hardened yet. So I'm going to give that a little slam. Again, metal block, eye protection, always. I'm going to do it. Oh, that's a nice little matte texture. Looks kind of satiny. Let's see if I, if I layer it how that looks. That's what I want this for. Pretty good though. The edges are kind of sharp for what I need it, so I might soften them a little bit. For the file. But I, I kind of like it. It's very matte. You know, I like that. I like how it looks. I was going to use my flex shaft and like a burr to really rough it up, but I like that soft matte. Gonna... Yeah, I 
I'm going to take some, one of my needle files here and I'm just going to soften up these edges so they're not quite because they're, they're really hard. So for the texture punch, just light, very lightly. So if you have a, something like a texture punch, you can do that. Or it, you don't have to have them sharp. If you want like a very shallow, like a very almost domed impression with your stamp, do that. Go over them. Very lightly. Curve that up. That's what I am doing. Edges are too hard, so I'm just gonna soften these edges of the stamp. Oh yeah, that feels that feels nice and smooth. That's nice and smooth. Okay, now that I've smoothed it, I'm probably taking off some texture, so I'm gonna do that some more. Add more texture. Looks good. Looks very matte. Time for a comparison. Oh, that's right. I'm like normally my, my hammer hook is like right behind me, so I'm like, hammer! I'm like, ah, where'd it go? So I'm gonna try in this corner here. We'll do a little bit of contrast and compare. nice I still have my nice texture but the edges are not as hard so that's cool that one's getting a little warm all right I'm gonna wrap this up then so I've got my nice I got my nice texture the edges are, a little, are nice and soft I'm gonna do this just a wee bit more like I said use whatever you want not shiny at all. Now, I'm going to put that away. Now we have to get it hard again. Got to temper it. Now, you, since it's a steel, you can temper it in oil. So we used motor oil to really harden it up. I don't know how to use motor oil. Water works just fine. This is my quench water that I use for everything. So, back into the little kiln it goes. Off goes the light. Nothing, nothing super flammable or anything like that above. Unlock the torch, as before. I always, I always look, because I don't want to over tighten it, because if you over tighten it, you can kind of damage this and it can cause leaks. So, even though you know, you know, Righty tighty lefty loosey, and that's how this is. I always read it. I always have to look and read. So, we're gonna make this glow again. Oh. go. Quench it. Off. And locked. There. It is quenched. said it's harder it gets you better results if you do the proper steel tempering but uh, quenching it real quick in water works just fine too there 
and there it is. It's kind of scrungy. Now, normally, at this point, to make it nice and shiny, let me show you a difference here. I'll need the light for this so you can see the difference. I'm going to put it right above us here. There. You see this piece of copper I practiced on? That's where, see how a lot of, I know it's out of focus, hard to see, but you see how all of these guys are really shiny? And that's my mat. That's the matting tool I just made. It's not super shiny, but that's what I want. This is super, these are very, look at my little, look, see how shiny those are right in there, see? They're very shiny on the inside. Um, so, uh, what, now, again, normally this is where I would polish it, but I'm not going to. I will clean this. I will take a, like a brass brush and give it a, like once over with my forehead. I'll do that real fast. Actually, I need that. I'm going to use a wire brush and just get some of the residue from the heat off of it. Now, I know you're like, oh, you're just going to brush brush it. Wear this. These little wire brushes, this is really hard because I have a huge head. <laughs> this is good. For, this is just blocking this stuff from hitting me in the face. Because even with these little guys, little bits fly off of the wire. So, I'll always wear this. Oh, that's still very hot. I'm just going to go like that. Wow, that's hot still. There. Cleaned it up nice. Still very matte, not super shiny. That's all I want to do is get the all that tarnish that's on my hands. Get that off. So we are done with the tool. But I want to show you, let's say you want to make a cool pattern stamp. Let's say you want to make a cool pattern stamp and get nice shiny results for your jewelry. I'm gonna adjust the adjust the, there we go. There. You wanna make a nice pattern stamp and get some good results for your jewelry. Clean that up. And, you know, I polish these. I got this nice and shiny. What I use, uh, I use Gray Star. I, uh, it always says, four frets hammers. Uh, a few years ago, I went to Tucson. Uh, Brian, his family, you know, us, we all went to Tucson for the big Tucson gem show, and I got to meet Bill Fretz, and I bought some hammers and stuff. Well, his dad bought me some, Brian's dad, my father-in-law, bought me some hammers and some stakes as a birthday present, early birthday gift. He's like, here you go. So I'm like, oh, hammers and stakes, Bill Fretz, oh my god. Which is, they, I, they, they're my babies, and they have a special drawer all for them. They are my babies. So, <laughs> I love them. Anyway, uh, but talking to Mr. Fretz, he said he recommends the Gray Star compound for his hammers. If you ever get a ding or a scratch in the hammers, you gotta get them back shiny again. Use this stuff. And you get a hard buff, and it's a dedicated buff. Don't... I, I know a lot of you know don't cross-contaminate your buffs with your stuff, with, you know, separate buffs for separate compounds. But it's, this is aggressive stuff. If you get any of this on something you put on silver, it's just going to eat it. So, keep, I actually don't even keep my Gray Star buff. Like, a lot of my buffs, they sit right there. My Gray Star one is in the drawer, like an inch away from everything else. So, because <laughs> I don't want to risk contamination. And that's, again, hard, hard buff. Go at it. Make it nice and shiny, because the shinier, the shinier and more clean your stamp, the shinier, more clean your impression is going to be. So, let me just show you, because I mean it's pretty obvious the metal stuff. Let's see if I can get you guys in here. 
there's a little piece of leather. There's a little tiny piece of leather. Got, uh, I don't want to use quench water because that stuff's gross. Got some water right here. Even though it's a matting tool. Let's see how it looks. Let's get the leather wet. This is like very basic leather working. Light. Oh, light. You got this, and I know this is totally the wrong hammer for leather working, but I'm not a leather worker. What else we can do leather work? So I'm just going to do this on leather, just for funs. That actually looks very leather textured. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I'll do my, put this big Viking one in there. Yeah. Hey, there we go. So you can totally use, make this, and texture piece of leather. Yeah, make yourself like a bookmark, or a bracelet, or something. Ah, there we go. So yeah, that is how... I make punches and stamps to use in my jewelry. I've got a little bunny stamp. I actually had, there's a, there a time lapse of me making that um, in my time lapse section. And yes, uh, these, and you know, it has that nice little corner there. I'm excited to try this because it's got that nice little corner. Oh, I'm going to show you what you don't want to do. Because I love these stamps. The designs are so pretty, but I can't use them. Let me dig one out here. Uh, some of these are fine because they go right up to the edge, or very close to it, but some are nigh unusable. Here. I'm probably going to make one of these for myself. This is a moon. Here. Here's another way I like to test stamps. Yield ink pad. Light. Yeah, I know. Shop light. You need good light. Light's important. It's the old ink pad. It's moon. Moon. Wow, that didn't show up very well, did it? But yeah, there's the moon. It's a nice little stamp. But see how much space is there between the lines and the edge of the stamp? What I was hoping to do with the moon stamp, other than, you know, cute moon stamp. And you've probably seen this in a lot of jewelry pieces too. Was to, let me grab a, let me grab a gem here. Yeah, I got this guy. So we gotta get this guy. This gem. Let's say I wanted to put a cool border around him that had like, you know, little, little moons. Little moons. If I wanted to put this pattern around this, and I want to get it right, I can't get it next to the bezel, because there's the tips. Look at all that space. It has to be this far away from the setting. Or, or, I have to very, very carefully stamp my metal, and then put the setting on the metal, and hope it doesn't creak, creep, hope I got it perfect. So, I like to stamp later. So what I might do is uh, spend some time with the grinder and uh, grind away some of this excess here so I get a little bit of clearance. I don't know, maybe you can see. Maybe I get like a contrast with my hair or my face or something. There. Maybe you can see where it goes up. Which is no, no, because it goes then stamp. It's like, oh man. I like these. They're still pretty, uh, still big space, but look, they go in. So these, these can get, uh, not as close as I would like, but much closer. Much better. I like that a lot better. So, some of these, like, industrial 
esque numbering and lettering stamps are actually my favorites because you got a nice good square to hold on to but look that there's the letter it's an R look at that like a pencil or a crayon so go for that Go for, go for that and but again I've with this process you saw I mean I've been live streaming for like it says 40 minutes here I know this is a long video but with this I, but I've been talking for like 10 about what's a good stamp what's annoying what's what sucks that's what you can do with this though you can make your own stamps make them taper real good like I said, I just made a texture stamp at the corner, so because I know I'm gonna want to put some background in some very tight spaces. So I can do that with this. Which is nice. So nice. And yeah, you can do that with you can and I again now that you know you could easily modify these things. Like this one isn't even centered. Oh, can't see. It's not centered. The, the pattern is off to one side. Yeah, if you can see how it's, it goes like, you know, edge, and then and this one, it's edge and goes like that. Thing is, that's, it's a heart, and that's the edge of the lobes, so they should be, you know, like that, but they're not. So yeah, so these, these guys, admittedly, they were discount stamps. But it's good steel, cute designs. I am probably going to modify them. Especially when I'm like, oh, I really want to use this stamp. All right, well, time to fix you. <laughs> you will be modified. So yeah, quick note about designing. You got gemstones. Trace your stone. But like you saw me take the stamp and put it right up next to it. You can use a stamp pad. If you're wondering if your stamp will fit. Especially if you want to do a very specific style of piece. Like, I'm going to do a Viking. There's a Viking. I like hex keys, though. They're great for Vikings, because all you have to do is, like, connect the corners. <laughs> when you're filing your triangles, it's really easy to, to get them nice and true. Easy. So, use your stamp pad. And you can just, like, kind of outline your stone. And you can also see if it looks good. Outline your stone, see if it looks good. That way, when you cut out your paper and you, uh, I like to cut the paper out and stick it onto my silver with a bit of rubber cement, and then use that to saw. And this way, you know you're not gonna, leave, you're not gonna be like, oh, maybe I need like lots of space, and you won't be like, nah, that looks good. So, you'll you'll know you have plenty of room if you use this just stamp pad. It won't be 100% perfect, but it'll be definitely good enough for you to get the design how you want it. It'll get you, help you get your design how you want it. And you can actually see if it looks good. Like if you wanted a specific number of rays, you know, be like, oh, I gotta like do it. Like kind of. I can't go like north, south, east, west, and then just fill in. I've gotta like kind of tilt it. I have to do like one in the north and then like two in the south. And then like work my way up from there. Or down so that it can help you plan your design really well the ink pad which is awesome oh now it's dry and we've got a nice little stamp impression here oh focus you fail me why oh well easy this would be really cool on a bracelet or maybe on a bookmark purse whatever so metal leather you can probably emboss paper if you do paper crafting you want to do some really sweet embossing anything you would need a stamp for um but again these are not heavy duty these are not for like if you're making steel armor these are gonna, these aren't tough enough i don't think to do anything to that i actually have a friend who makes uh who makes uh cool stamps he's a blacksmith 
His name is Drogo, and it's Ravenwald Arms. And no, he didn't pay me to say this. I'm just saying it because Drogo's cool. He's cool, and he's a very good blacksmith. He's awesome. So, and if you want to, like, need stamps for crazy forging stuff, he's got your stamps. He'll hook you up. Because, I mean, he forges them. Here, we are upcycling slash modifying old tools and nails for our purposes. I know he uses, like, I, I think... Oh, crap, he totally used... I can't remember. But still. He also uses good steel, but he, like, forges them really cool, so... He does lots of Viking stuff. So you want sweet, like... Also, they're big. So you can get, like, the big triangle. Like, they're, they're like, they're, like, big. Just... I know he can make tiny ones, too. But he makes them, like, big so you can, like, really decorate your stuff. If you like leather work or, like, want Viking stuff. You want it to be really prominent. I would definitely go there. Definitely go there. But if you want to decorate some of your own little things or make yourself some Viking rings or some bracelets or cuffs, decorate maybe a Thor hammer, cut out, cut yourself out a Mjolnir and decorate it, you go right ahead. And again, don't, I mean, Viking patterns are, are really simple, but uh, any tool you have to cut metal, uh, you can use your saws and make like a hash marks. I would say a hashtag, Well, you could make a hashtag with a saw on the surface, just like cut, 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 cut. You could do that. You could make, use burrs. Here's some of my burrs. Use burrs to make little divots. I use these teeny, teeny, tiny ones. But yeah, any burrs. These are some of them. So use your burrs. Use your gravers, use your files, use your saws. Any way to remove metal in the way that you want, do it. Just harden it when you're done. Nice red hot, quench it. And polish it up, you'll get a nice shiny, nice shiny mark. It'll be nice and smooth. And don't forget, as you're going, to test it on annealed copper so you don't mess up, mess it up, because... It hasn't been hardened, so anneal some, get some scrap copper, anneal it, which is basically heat it up till it starts to change color a lot. I know for silver, if you're working, if you're stamping on silver and you want to anneal your silver, uh, make a sharpie mark on it, anneal it, put it in your annealing pan, hit it with a torch. When the sharpie disappears, it's annealed. I don't, I know the temperature is different for copper, but I'm pretty sure if uh, the sharpie disappears on copper, it's annealed or at least close enough and that'll work just fine that's what I do so yes there's a nice little matting little matting punch and you can make whatever patterns you'd like and if you do make some I would really really like to see them because I I, I like when I show when I show someone something or I explain something like oh that's neat and they're like look what I did I'm like, oh, please <laughs> Please show me, because, I mean, I've only started just, I've made a hand, okay, I made like a bunny and a bunch of Viking ones and a matting punch and stuff. I've only just really started my tool making, stamp making adventure here, and which is why I'm like, I need a box of masonry nails, because someone did say, be careful, it's addicting. They were not wrong. I have so many ideas. And already I am thinking, I wonder if he'll notice if I take more of the good hex keys out, the good Allen wrenches, hex wrenches out of the uh, toolbox. I wonder if he'll notice. Hmm. <laughs> I'm already doing that, so um, what I'm thinking is probably uh, maybe next weekend hitting up the flea market because there's always used tool vendors there. There's always, there's always a flea market. There's always someone with like really a box of rusty tools or hit up a, a yard sale or whatever. There's always people selling rusty tools. And, I mean, maybe the steel's crap. Maybe it's good. I don't know. Worth a shot, right? So I might just hit up the flea market and look, uh, go get some whole bunch of Allen wrenches and whatnot. See if, uh, See if they work, because 
Right now I am limited to Mesa Big. And now I'm wondering if I can't make my own alphabet. Because it's certainly possible. And that's really exciting. That, that's very, very exciting. I do calligraphy, so like, ooh, I can make a stamped alphabet. So, yes. <laughs> I'm a dork. Anyway, yeah, like I said, if you do something with this, be safe. Safe. Don't, don't go, but I don't. No. Safe. Be safe. Use your fire and your tools responsibly. Always clean up your work area. I don't, I don't need the ghost of my grandfather to come haunt me and tell me, it's like, what does your badge look like a mess? Because, yeah, he was clean. <laughs> and as you can see, this... Like, this part is messy, because I've been working. But these guys will go stacked right here with my other things. It's actually quite clean. <laughs> so yeah, keep your work area clean. Watch out for hot stuff. If you use map gas and you've never used it before, again, I think we got that at Home Depot. Uh, oh yeah, I got that at Home Depot. Oh, I can't remember what it cost. But again, um, a, a lot of these basic tools you can find at the hardware store. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a jeweler, so <laughs> I have all these jewel fancy jeweler's tools. But you don't need to afford them to uh, carve into these things. You can use a lot of common Dremel tools. You can get like a Dremel or something to cut into these. Again, if you have something that can cut metal, you can use it to make a stamp. And as long as you've got enough fire, uh, you can use one of those. But it'll take a while. It will take a while to use one of those things. That's a regular little propane. But it's got a really big flame. But it takes forever. Hence uh, me going, what about the map gas? That burns pretty hot. And as you saw, it was pretty good. And that guy's totally cool by now. Um, ready to... He and his friends are ready to be turned into more stamps. I might do more tonight. I don't know. It's really fun. I have ideas now. I have more ideas since I've been talking. So yes, make cool things, make fun stuff. Or uh, if you have a friend, if you have a friend who likes to do metalworking or even leatherworking, honestly, how cool a gift would this be? If you have a friend who likes leather work, just make sure you do it safely. Fireproof surfaces, turn off your torch, make sure everything is off. Keep the, keep the tip after it's used. Put it over there. Point it away from where anyone can walk into it. Uh, if you don't have a dedicated workshop space like I do, do this outside. I mean, you could, you, could do it on, you could do it on the sidewalk. Well, maybe not the sidewalk in front of your house. But <laughs> in the front, like the driveway. You could do this in the parking lot or a driveway. Without, I think, making too many people mad. Because really, you just have to heat it up. Then you can go away. You can come back, heat it up again, and quench it. So, you should be fine. Just be careful. It is really, really hot. And it didn't look hot earlier when I tested it. It won't look hot. Just hold your hand over it. And if you're like, oh, that's a bad idea. If any part of your brain tells you that's a bad idea, I know you're eager to get started. Listen to that part of your brain. Don't touch it. Again, I know I'm not about safety, but my Grandpa Smith taught metal tech and wood shop and drafting all this stuff to high schoolers and I heard all the horror stories <laughs> growing up and I also helped my other grandpa my grandpa Sinclair with farming and I heard all the horror stories growing up from him and his buddies for people who don't pay attention around tools and machinery so yeah I, if I heart you seem like I harp on it quite a bit it's because of that and I've actually witnessed a lot of fails that were pretty nasty and I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. I got... I witnessed enough to the point where it's like, oh, man. Ugh, I'll get the bleach. You know, I'm gonna clean... I'll clean up the blood. Literally, I've said that. Like, I'll clean up the blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's hit that point. And it's always something stupid. Very few of them were actual, honest to goodness, 100% accidents. Most of them people being stupid not respecting the tools and not paying attention and not wearing proper safety gear 
So, safety. Don't yell at me if you get hurt. Safety. Common sense safety. But that said, go have fun. Yeah, go have fun. Be safe, but have fun. Metal Metalworking is awesome. Uh, I don't do leather work, but I have many friends who do, and they love leather work. So, that's cool. And now my brain goes, now you have Christmas presents. It's like, it's true. That's true. I can make some sweet stamps. I'm excited to get my hands on some large pieces of tool steel. Maybe like that big. See if I can uh, use my graver and my tools to really cut into that thing. Cut into those and make something really big, like maybe a coat of arms. Almost like a signet ring or like a wax seal sort of deal. Ooh, one of the amusing wax. Oh, wax seals. I didn't even think of that. Yes. See? There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, if you're just using it for wax, though, it doesn't need to be tool steel, honestly. But there you go. <laughs> There's more ideas. Hey, sweet. Well, I'll let you guys go. Thank you for hanging out with me for almost an hour here in the workshop and seeing the process. Seeing the process. I like I like showing you guys what I do. I like showing what I do. I like explaining what I do. And uh, if you have any questions, ask in the comments. Uh, if there's anything in particular, if you're like, oh my goodness, you're doing it so wrong. Oh well, it works for me. I've made lots of jewelry. <laughs> I've made lots of jewelry out of the stamps I've already made, actually. So, and it works just fine. I mean. Maybe I know something wrong. Maybe they'll wear out sooner than other ones will. I don't know. But I can just remake them. No biggie. No big deal. I'll just grind off the face, recut. Well, anneal it, grind off the face, recut it. You know, do the thing, do the whole process. But yeah, I mean, that's fine. I'm okay with that. And, uh,. Yeah, and if I did help you, if you've been wondering how how to do this or something, if this helped, let me know. I, I like to hear things. I like to hear from you because, I mean, one of the great joys of making art and making pretty things is sharing with other people, and I really like to do that. And I get a lot of people going, oh, I wish I could do that. I'm like, it's not hard. It takes practice. I mean, if you're really uneven with a file, it will your first stamp will probably turn out kind of crappy. And that's okay, because it's a box of masonry nails, and they are not expensive. This is... I'm sure... I'm sure in a year, the stamps I make are going to be like a million times better than the ones I'm making right now. I'm positive. At least I would hope so. Crap. That would suck. <laughs> that would mean I learned nothing. Um, but yeah, you'll level up. You'll level up as you go. I'll level up as I go. And as I learn more... So, yeah. Have a nice evening. Or morning, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, stop screaming.